All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you see, I'm holding a stick here. And I'll get to this in a minute. But uh, we're gonna talk about deer habitat in the winter, how do deer survive, and what the best habitat for deer is. And um, we're scouting this property here, and my hands are cold. But as you can see behind me here, we have, it's roughly 50 acre field where they planted uh, corn. Well, the corn is harvested, and I just walked through it, and there's zero corn left. So I've been walking, along this strip of woods here. And I probably walk this edge, it probably it wraps around um, maybe about three, 400 yards. And within this uh, woods line, you got sunlight. And I found roughly about 15 different varieties of um, plants, bushes, shrubs, woody brows that the deer, did, did, uh, the deer are eating. And some of it, I don't even know what it is, but that doesn't matter because all we need to know is, or all you need to know is that the deer are eating it. And this is what deer are eating, warty brows, right? Well, if you break it open, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's still green on the inside. And for the majority of the winter, this will be green on the inside and deer know that when they browse. And if you smell that, it smells kind of sweet. It's got a sweet smell. Deer know this, you know, deer, this is what, look at that. And it's actually still got moisture content on the inside. It's not dead, you know, it's still got, it's still holding moisture. And um, this is palatable to the deer. And what that means is this is how deer survive through the winter months. And we need more of this. Well, the key to, you know, getting, helping deer, because everybody wants to help deer, right? And, you know, I've made plenty of videos on, you know, deer don't need our help. And they truly don't. Um, most of the times, um, this stuff is here um, to provide deer and other wildlife with plenty of food. Um, there are certain situations where you have an overabundance of deer and not enough food. Um, that is the case in, in some places. And I say this all the time, each state is different, each county is different, every 100 acres is different. Each 100 acres provides, can provide a different amount of habitat, food, cover, shelter, water um, to the deer. Well, this particular property, we have a stream that runs through the back here out in front of me. Um, and you have all this browse along this woods line, which is uh, incredible because when you walk this edge, everything is browsed on by the deer. You know, it's browsed on roughly about two, I'd say two to four feet uh, in height, all the way across, all the way around. There's briars, there's different types of shrubs and bushes and different types of grasses that are still a little bit green. Um, I dip down into the woods a little bit, all kinds of browse, just everything. And the deer have been feeding on this because there's no green leaves left. When the leaves fall off the trees, bushes and briars and shrubs and everything, they focus on woody browse. And this is what they consume all through the winter months, December, January, February, March up into uh, spring green up when everything starts to bud out and starts to leaf out again. When that happens, they, tra they transition to the, le the leafy part of the, of the briars and bushes and uh, shrubs and you know, whatever you know, weeds and boards and stuff come up, they transition. So no matter what it is in your area, in your property, there's always some sort of food that will help deer eat, survive, conserve energy, and or provide energy. And I hate it when you see all these videos online where, you know, land managers and different different uh, hunters and stuff will go through and they'll just start killing all these different types of grasses and weeds and briars and uh, honeysuckle. Well, a lot of people think that honeysuckle is bad. Well, if, if that's the only variety that you have on your property, then yeah, it's bad. But if you only have a little bit of honeysuckle, who cares? Deer eat it. They may not eat it in June. They may not eat it in July. They may not eat it in August. They may not eat it in September. They might, may not eat it in October. But I guarantee you at some point, whether it's October, November, December, January, they will eat honeysuckle. They'll eat the crap out of it. We have it on our property and there's no reason to get rid of it because it's deer food. Each month, each week, each portion or each time frame of that year, there's something for the deer to eat. Like I said, 
there's like 15 or so varieties of, of bushes and, and stuff that I walked through and counted that the deer have been nibbling on. And some of it, I don't know what it is. And I don't really care because it's food for the deer and they will tell you what they like. So in order to get more of this, and the reason it's growing here is because it's on the edge of a field. You have plenty of sunlight that hits this every day and allows this stuff to grow. Um, back in the timber, you get less of this because it's shaded out. Um, the sun doesn't hit the forest floor and there's many techniques you know, to, to help that. With that, you can do some hinge cutting. Um, in certain situations, you can do hack and squirt. I, I enjoy that on some, on some areas. Hack and squirt's a good method. Um, and then also uh, timber cuts, select cuts is my favorite, uh, where you're not, you're not logging the company out, you're not, or the property out, you're not taking every tree, you're taking the big trees and allowing the immature trees to mature over time. You're opening up the canopy to allow the sunlight to hit the floor, uh, floor floor. And um, select cuts is, like I said, one of my favorite. Clear cuts um, is beneficial as well. Um, a lot of clients have that, a lot of clear cuts. But the problem with clear cuts is it pretty much leaves like a, a disaster a lot of times. So what we do is, or what I like to do is, I go in there and just like to clean them up. You know, if there's, if there's no room to walk, I'll take uh, chainsaws and cut trails through it. You can drag a bunch of le uh, logs out of the way. Um, there's many different ways to do it, but deer, you know, like to be able to move um, freely through there, especially um, in uh, like hinge cut areas. If they can't get through freely, it's no good. So you have to open that up and, you know, all this stuff, there's no exception. You know, if you're, if you're making clear cuts and uh, select cuts and stuff, they have to be able to maneuver through it. Um, deadfalls, you know, things like that. If it's blocking each area, it's no good. But with that, you'll allow all that sunlight to get down in there. And that is probably one of the best things you could possibly do to your property to give the deer more food. Food plots help as well, but you got to remember food plots are not going to be enough to sustain um, enough food and deer herd, you know, through the entire winter, especially if you're talking what most of us hunters are planning, you know, quarter acre, eighth acre, half acre. Um, and it's a matter of planting the right species too, winter wheat. Uh, rye and, and things that'll get you through the winter months. It'll still stay green. You get a warm day, it greens right back up. So there's many different techniques to, to provide or to help deer. And with this here, deer don't need our help. There's plenty of food along this woods line. Um, they don't need our help, right? Now, sure, if let's say this whole field here was a whole field of winter wheat, then it would definitely benefit the deer because we're talking 50 acres, right? Most hunters don't have 50 acres to plant like this. And, you know, 50 acres of corn, it's gone now. So this whole field is sitting dormant. There's no food in this field for the deer. It's all along the woods line. It's all in the, it's all in the woods itself, browse, briars, um, the things that, you know, deer feed on in the wintertime. So consider this when you're going into um, your property, uh, this year um, and how to create more browse is open up sunlight, you know, get some sunlight to the forest floor and remember that if you don't have this type of situation, don't worry about it. Deer really don't need our help. There's plenty of food here. There's, there's pros and cons to everything. Each property is different. So you just have to evaluate your own and come up with a plan and execute it. You know, each year you work on it and it's, remember it's always what you do this year. It benefits next year. So if you guys have any questions, post them down below. I'll see you guys on the next video.